All right, yogis, let's get started. So make your way into child's pose. <clears throat> Take a few moments to get rooted and grounded. Start to monitor your breath. Notice how when your thoughts begin to fluctuate from the past or begin to transport themselves forward into the future, how the breath begins to change. Allow the yoga's practice to teach you how that steadiness, calming feeling of the present moment can come with you throughout your day. Feel the breath, feel the peace, feel the steadiness in the moment of now. And then remind yourself throughout the day when moving forward can seem scary, that this space is always here and always available to you. Come back to the breath. Let's start to pick up the torso and walk it to the right. And as you do, stretch the whole left side of the body. Something that we've been really good in the yoga world <clears throat> in describing is the flexibility, is the stretch aspect of the pose. But I invite you to open up yourself to the strength aspect of the pose because without the strength aspect, flexibility doesn't hold longevity or have a leg to stand on. So here, feel and notice how the right side of your body contracts and the left side body expands. And at your own pace, bring it back to center and then over to the left. And then again, feel that duality of the left side body contracting and the right side body expanding. We have this duality in all of the poses. See if you can connect with them. This is the science behind the yoga pose. Come back to center and set your intentions. Intentions are like little prayers or affirmations we sprinkle on our mat that help us to get present when just trying to tell ourselves to get present isn't working anymore. It helps us to detach from the craziness of the story and the constant what we don't want and allows us to focus and implement what we do want. Focusing on the solution and getting away from the problem. So yogis, what do you want? And to make our way up to tabletop, so find yourself on the hands and knees. We're gonna move our way through some cat-cows. Roll the shoulders back, inhale, lift the chin, tailbone and eye gaze up. And on your exhale, round and curl. Chin to chest, navel to spine. Again, roll the shoulders back, inhale, look up, reach up through your sit bones. Exhale and round and curl. So again, we talked about the strength, the duality to the flexibility. So as you roll the shoulders back, inhale, feel your back muscles contract so that you're not just sinking on your spine. It's something we never want to do in the yoga practice. Exhale, round and curl. And now notice how the front of your body is contracting and pulling in to now stretch the back body. Good, take a couple more, really focusing on, rather than sinking onto the joints, contracting onto the muscles. Good, take your right arm forward as if you were going to shake someone's hand and then drag it back, lean back, up and around, lean forward. So we're taking these big circles and momentum, and yes, is a great thing to use here, but make sure you're pulling your shoulder blade onto the back. When we are able to attach those back muscles, we're better to get an opening in the front of the head of the shoulder and arm. And then reverse the direction. So what we're finding out more and more often in our yoga teacher trainings here at the joint is that Many of us, it's not that we're inflexible in the front of the shoulder, it's that the back muscles have become a bit weak. Reach your right arm all the way up and pause, and then thread your needle. So threading the needle, we don't have a lot of gravity here against the hips, so if you feel like you're getting stuck in your twist, let your hips turn a bit. And you can also slide forward. So if you feel like your spine is crunching, you can slide it out a little bit. There, that's better, Daniela. To get a long spine, because the longer your spine is, the more deeper, the more efficient your twist can become. The left hand can stay on the ground. You can find a bind, taking your left arm around the hip, grabbing the inner thigh. And if you choose the balance challenge, you can first find the weight on your right knee, then take your left leg back and up. We always want to complete our long lines of energy. So when poses feel wobbly, make sure you spread the toes. Something we like to do here is the Barbie doll foot. You can hear Barbie doll foot, foinid foot. It's a 
kind of do a flex, Deanna. So it's not a flex, and then do a point. Good, and now if you were to just fan the toes back, that's the point. It's like a flex and a point at the same time. Okay, lower your left knee down softly if you brought it up. Press into your left hand, everyone, and then reach your right arm forward. Good, find your balance here, and take your left leg back and up. Flex the foot, inner spiral the thigh. Good, so Danielle, let's bring this leg more to the midline here. We're coming out a bit, good. Inhale, lift up, and on your exhale, round and curl, elbow to knee. Good, again, inhale, reach out and lift up. On your exhale, round and curl it in. Good, one more time, inhale, lift, reach. Exhale, round and squeeze, and really getting into that breath. Take a moment to pause. We have this tough external layer or fascia of the body. It's kind of like an orange. When you pry it, the pungent layer of an orange, you eventually get to the sweet stuff on the inside. The practice is the same, so don't give up on it. Half moon on the knee, bring your right hand down. Now spin your right foot out, good. So you can see Tracy here has got a really nice good turnout on the bottom leg. This will give her a wider stance, so a little more stability. You can play around with that. Good, so stay here or lift the leg up higher and go for a bow. If you're taking your bow, Bend your knee, squeeze your heel to your hip, then push back, then grab the foot. Don't be in such a rush to get the hand to the foot because if you go too fast, you don't turn on the back body muscles that are needed to support you and you end up toppling over. Strength before flexibility. Beautiful, everyone. Make your way back to half moon on the knee. Bring your left hand down and square yourself off. So this can be a tricky transition. You don't have to uh, utilize it. You can just meet us to one-legged dog. Otherwise, tuck your right toes under, wrap your ribs and lean forward, and then push back one-legged dog, keeping the leg lifted. Good, not easy, awesome. Take about five breaths to explore what's going on here. So you can open the hip, close it, bend, straighten the leg, circle the ankle. You can move faster, you can move slower. Just make sure that you're moving mindfully. So I go super slow because that gives me time to process the information into my body, analyze and, and see what I'm working with with my body. Come high on the ball of the right foot, round and curl, knee to nose. Teeny tiny little package. Shift the weight way forward. So if we're gonna do press ups to handstand, crow poses with the arms straight, you have to get more comfortable with the shoulders passing the wrists. Good, one-legged dog, that's a great time to practice it. Flex the foot, inner spiral the thigh. So you can have your palms flat, but something that might help you if your wrists get bothered at, at all, come on the finger pads and lift the heel of the hand, because that will help to keep the wrist long. Notice she has no crease in the wrist anymore, so that helps if you're starting to get sore in your wrists. Round and curl, knee to nose, and then place your foot between your hands. Roll your shoulders back, lift your chest, and lengthen your spine. Let's place the right knee down for a minute. Good, and inhale, sweep the arms all the way up overhead. Lift the five toes on your left foot up and isometrically drag your right knee up the mat and your left heel back. Good. Start to tilt your ears back. Good, and then for the count of five, circle your arms back, down, like a half circle, and around to frame your foot for lunge. Good, tuck the right toes under, lift up the back leg. Take the left leg back to high plank and pause. So plank is a full body integration. Lift your knees, lift your thighs, wrap your ribs in, push away from the floor. At the same time, pull the shoulders back as you shift the weight a little more forward. Good, slowly bring your knees back down to the mat, tabletop. Good, so dip your chest forward and down between your hands for grasshopper pose. So your elbows are in and up like little locust wings. Good, this is the back bend in the practice. You wanna take a mental picture of what this feels like. This is how we want our back bends to be, the sensation in our body. Slide all the way down to your tummy and point the feet behind you, forehead on the earth. Exhale, and on your inhale, find a baby cobra. Push into the tops of your feet and your thighs, start to lift up. Press down into your lower half so much you can lift your hands up. If that's not available for you today, that is fine. Just make sure you're starting to connect with your back muscles till you're ready to fearlessly lift them off the ground. Exhale and lower, forehead to the earth. Separate your knees a little bit wider than your hips and walk your hands a little closer to your ribs. Exhale and on your inhale, lifted cobra. So in lifted cobra, general rule of thumb is that you can come up as high as you can keep your shoulders back and down. Because when you keep your shoulders back and down, it means your back muscles are turned on. Squeeze back together here a little bit more. Good. 
Keep working on squeezing through here. Good. Exhale and lower forehead to the earth. One more time. Lifted cobra. So maybe give yourself a little bit freedom to explore here in your lifted cobra. If you want to take a twist from side to side, if you want to stretch your neck, just taking your chin side to side, maybe you're just working on deepening into your back bend and lower down, child's pose. Knees together, hips on the heels. When we bring the knees together in our child's pose, it stretches a little bit more the lower back as opposed to when the knees are wide, it's a little bit more in the groins. So it's up to your choosing which one you need more of today. Come up to tabletop. Let's repeat the whole flow on the other side. So take the left arm forward and then back up and around. Big circles, again, using momentum, but also using muscular energy, contracting the shoulder blade back on to the spine. And this next go round, reverse the direction, taking it up, back, and around. Allow it to feel good. Sometimes what we need to do is just allow ourselves to feel good and get out of our own way. Reach the arm all the way up and pause and thread your needle, take it through. Good, right hand can stay on the ground. You can find your half bind, reaching around for the hip or the thigh. And if you're taking your right leg back and up, find the weight on your left knee first, then take the right leg up. Find your pelvic floor. Both Daniela and Tracy, try to take your leg into the midline instead of out to the right side. So draw up from your right inner thigh Good, as opposed to the outer thigh. There you go. Good, lower your uh, right leg down if you chose to bring it up. Press into the right hand and reach the left arm forward. Take the right leg back and up. Inhale, lift, and on your exhale, round and curl it in. Again, inhale, reach, lift up, Exhale, round and curl it in. One more time, inhale, reach, and then exhale, squeeze. And then keep drawing in through the belly. Do not ever give up on yourself. Some of us have a little bit tougher outer layer than others, so you may open up more quickly, or it may take a little bit more time. Bring your left hand down, spin it open for half moon on the knee extending the right leg back and reaching the right arm up. Good. So you can always take a knee down side plank, grounding the outer edge of your foot on the earth. Good. Or if you're working that bow pose again, bend the knee, squeeze the heel to the hip, grab it, and then work on kicking back. Moving slowly and mindfully enough so that you can assess the situation and see what you're working with. Make your way back to half moon on the knee. Bring your right hand down and square yourself off. Tuck the left toes under, wrap the ribs in, push away from the floor, one-legged dog. Back and up. Good. Or find a way to meet us there. Five breaths to explore here. So you can open the hip and close it. Bend and straighten the leg, circle the ankle. You can make big straight leg circles reaching out of the hip. And then maybe one day your legs will get as long as Deanna's. <laughs> Come high on the ball of your left foot. Round and curl, knee to nose. We should all be so lucky. Shift the weight way forward. This is a great time to get comfortable with the shoulders going beyond the wrists. This will strengthen the whole upper forearm, bicep to shoulder connection that's needed for pressing up. Good. Take it back to one-legged dog. Flex the foot inner spiral the thigh. Good, and as you inner spiral the thigh, try not to dump, so the hip is square, but it's not dumping, and the left hip pulls back. Good, round and curl, knee to nose, and then place the right foot down between the hands for lunge. Place the left knee down, sweep the arms all the way up, and catch a little back bend. So it doesn't have to be a big back bend. It can be super intimidating to look around the room and see really big back bends. Know that health and longevity is spinal health is not determined by the depth of your back bend. It's just that you do it. Good. Take the hands down and around. 
to frame your foot and find lunge. High plank and pause. Good. So plank is a full body integration and it's the preface for the chaturanga and the chaturanga is the preface for all the arm balances to come. So if you should really, really work on great alignment in your chaturangas if you want to attack arm balances one day. Shift the weight forward, bend the elbows, come down halfway. Try not to come down too low. So the shoulders point directly forward, they're not pointing down to the ground. Good, then come all the way down, relax. Good, lifted cobra again. And now you can always stay in a lifted cobra or find an upward dog. Up dog, you push into the tops of the feet and add the lifting of the knees and the thighs up off the mat. Try not to go into up dog and lose the back bend. That's why we did all those cobras to start, because it's the preface for the upward face, which is that big expansive back bend. And then press back, beautiful guys, downward facing dog. Breathe. Really use that ujjayi breath. Ujjayi actually means that we gain victory over the breath. So again, we can use this here in our practice and then we can allow it to translate into our lives. With straight legs and flexed feet, begin to baby step your way all the way up to the top of the mat. We're looking to find those pelvic floor muscles deep down low, hang heavy. You can bend the knees if you need to. You can place your hands on shins, blocks, or on the floor. We're gonna take a couple vocal exhales. Inhale, lift up, lengthen your spine, and then open your mouth and let it all go. Ha. <sighs> Again, roll the shoulders back. Inhale, lift up, lengthen. Vocal exhale, ha. <sighs> One more time, roll the shoulders back. Inhale, lengthen. And vocal exhale, let it go. Hang heavy and roll up slowly, one vertebra at a time. When you reach the top, roll the shoulders back and down, equalization pose. In equilibrium, we want to take a moment to monitor the thoughts because 90% of the time it's the thoughts that are creating what we are feeling in the body. So you can take the steering wheel. Inhale, reach all the way up, upward handstand, lengthen through the sides of your waist, root the tail down. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen up halfway. And either walk, jump, or float back this time, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Take the right leg back and up. Round and curl, knee to nose. So this time, hold it and put on an imaginary seat belt around your hips. They cannot move. Take the right knee towards your left underarm. It's okay if it doesn't touch. Try not to dip your hips low just to get the hip to touch. Keep them level so you stay in the abdominals. Now take the knee to the right underarm. Yes. And take it back and up for one-legged dog. Step all the way through to lunge. Press down, find your footing, and then reach up, high crescent. Biceps by the ears. Good, so if at any time the high crescent is too much information, the left knee can always go back on the ground in the low crescent variation. Try to square your hips off, right hip back, left hip forward. Reach your arms back by your ears, take a big inhale, and fold halfway down. We wanna keep some back flexion or a sensation of a back bend in it. So, you want to keep your arms up by your ears or behind them. They should not have moved. Now take the left hand down and circle the right arm up for lunge twist. Hug your inner thighs in. And in the left hand, <clears throat> is everybody has it flat on the ground. That's amazing. The hand can be flat or you can be on those finger pads again or fingertips. You just want to make sure you're not sinking on your left hand, but the right leg is sharing the weight between the leg and the arm. Counter twist. Take your right hand inside of your foot and reach your left arm up. Same thing, if your hand is flat or fingertips, you can even bring your hand up on a block, which is nice. Make sure that you're creating space and no matter what, you're pushing away from the right hand instead of sitting in it. Turn your left heel down and come all the way up to warrior two pose. Push the knees back, external rotation. And you can always take a glance at your right toes. Make sure you can see them. If you can't, you need a bigger step. 
Three pumping warriors. Inhale, reach up, straighten your legs, hug muscle to bone. Exhale, make your way back to warrior two. Again, inhale, reach up, make space in your joints. And then exhale, land lightly in warrior two. One more time, just like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Flip the palm of your right hand up and reverse your warrior. Let the left hand slide down the left leg and the right bicep come by the ear. All the time you'll see people in a back bend variation of this. Here we want to stay in a side stretch. So put on a slight imaginary yoga corset. Extended floor angle. Your right forearm can either rest on your thigh or take your hand to the ground on fingertips, palms flat, or on a block. We like in front of the leg, pushing the knee back, although the hand can go behind it. But this is a nice setup if you're going for a bind. So if you're one day gonna do the bind, the arm's already ready to go. Left arm around the back, right arm through the hole, hooking the fingers or grabbing the wrist. You're already set up for it. Again, if you're learning and you wanna learn how to do these binds and more uh, intricate variations of the poses, you can always check out our tutorial section and our workshop sections. There's lots of stuff there that'll help you out. Bring the hands down inside of your right foot and find a low lizard lunge. Drop your left knee down, slide it back, take your right foot and give yourself as much room as you heel toe it off to the right side. So you can hang out right here on the elbows and forearms, give your hips some time to open up. You can also bring your forearms up on blocks if you're having a real difficult time. Yeah, highly recommend because you don't want to focus on your upper body having to hold up your lower body because it feels ter terrible in the pose. You want to get some comfortability in the pose so that you can give your hips the softness and the gentleness and the kindness that they deserve to open up. And just remember when there's a part of your body that's screaming at you, it's like anything in your life screaming at you, it needs love and affection. You can't punch an angry muscle, it's gonna punch you right back. Okay, so if you wanna take an arm balance, um, something I've been actively working on in my practice is funky forearm. You can bring your left forearm in, your right palm flat. If you wanna take scissors pose, I know Tracy loves scissors, she might go for it. I see her kinda of creeping in there. You can go for a scissors pose. Again, these are all in the tutorials if you were working on uh, any of those on the, in the workshop section, any of this more challenging stuff. And remember, falling is part of it. So if you go and you start trying this and you fall, that's part of it. Just try to remember that the master has fallen many more times than you can even think about. Let's all meet in a deep quad stretch. So come on up onto your left hand. Reach your right arm up, back, and around, and grab a hold of your back foot, squeezing your heel towards your seats. Nice job, Daddy Long Legs. Squeeze the heel towards the seat and melt the hips towards the ground. A little twist, a little back bend, looking over the right shoulder. Most importantly, breathe and focus especially on the exhaling breath. The body lets you in. Good, so bringing your hands back around, heel toe your right foot to the midline for half or full split. So square yourself back off. Take the hips back, toes to the face for half splits. Wrap the pinky toes into the midline and try not to lean back onto your right, outer right hip yeah, but pull the right sitting bone back and up. If you're taking full splits, tuck your left toes under and kick your right leg forward. Try not to think about the left hip releasing back because it's supposed to release directly back. What happens is when, when students tend to go, oh, release the hip back, it tends to open it up. We don't want to open hip. So just root down through your left big toe and only focus on the right leg going forward and that'll help you to stay more square in the pose. Blocks are a great option too under your hands for this one. All right, all in one action. Tuck your left toes under, sweep it through, one-legged dog, back and up. Good, so this is a nice vinyasa for your standing left leg. Cross your ankles, right ankle behind the left. So your right foot's gonna be dangling outside of the left leg. Shift the weight forward to plank, keeping your legs crossed. Bend the elbows, chaturanga. Now you're gonna keep the toes of your left foot tucked under, don't go on the top of the foot. Press through, upward face. And keep your legs crossed, press back downward face, pushing the left hip particularly back. It feels so good. And then find down dog, right foot meets the left. All right, same throw, left side. Left leg back and up, one-legged dog. Round and curl, knee to nose. Again, put on that imaginary yoga seatbelt, wrap your hips in, tighten it up, and just take the knee to the right underarm. 
If you're like so close to touching, walk your hands back to your foot more instead of like shorten your stance off a little bit instead of twisting the hip down. Yeah, now take it to the left underarm. So good. Back and up, one-legged dog. That could be what you're sore from too, Deanna, from the other day. Step it through, lunge. Ground down through your feet, press down to rise up, hot crescent pose. Reaching your arms up and back by the ears. Again, pull the arms up and back. Find your chest really shining and fold from your waist halfway down. So the chest isn't gonna drop, the shoulders aren't gonna drop, the fingers aren't gonna drop. The chest stays lifted, it's bending the left knee that gets you low in the pose. Take the right hand down and the left arm up for a twisting lunge. So if your right hand is kind of off into space and you're leaning over on the right side, walk it closer into the midline because that's the goal. It's like one day we're going to move into an outside twist and we're just going to keep deepening and wringing out the toxins from the internal organs. Counter twist, left hand inside of the foot and right arm up. Turn the right heel down and come on up, warrior two. Three pumping warriors. Inhale, reach up and squeeze. Exhale, warrior two. Again, inhale, reach up. So what I love about these videos is for you to practice them at home, and you'll take one more set. Particularly, you're probably not gonna have a room where you have mirrors like we tend to have in the studio, so you really don't have the opportunity to look around the outside. So try to feel your body from the inside. We use our eyes way too much anyway to dictate how we feel. So take everything that we're teaching you here, but you listen to your own body. Flip the palm and reverse it. Right hand down the right leg, left bicep to ear. Keep the ribs wrapping in, the navel to the spine, and as you reach back, stay in a side stretch as opposed to a back bend. Extended floor angle. So if you want to place the forearm on the thigh and reach the right arm up, that's a good check-in point. It's like a stop sign. Well, I'm going to look both ways. Now I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. Bring the hand down and the right bicep to the ear. That's extended floor angle. If you're going for a bind, go for a bind. You can also use a towel or a strap if you're trying to bind. It's a great tool to help you get deeper into your twists and shoulder stretches. Take one more breath wherever you are and find lizard lunge. Hands inside of the foot, right knee down. Make as much room as you need to with that left foot and come on down to the elbows, the forearms, finding your breath. Something also really great to help open your hips is ab resistance. So if you're really flexible, if you tuck the back foot under and lift up the back knee, this will get you into your groins and your hips a little bit more, as opposed to if the knee is down. That's only for pretty advanced people, so be super mindful and careful. If you're going for an arm balance, feel free to take it. So you can do a funky forearm, you can do any forearm really. You can do a scissors pose. <laughs> you can do a scissors pose in a funky forearm. <laughs> you know, yoga is supposed to be very explorative. We're supposed to be curious about our bodies. So try not to get so wrapped up in only one way because your body is different than my body, it's different than her body. Never judge, never compare. Deep quad stretch. Come on to your right hand, reach your left hand up, back, and around for the back foot, squeezing the heel towards the seat. And then what's very normal is when the hip flexors are tight, this, the tush really pops up high. So just keep thinking, softening, and exhaling down. Focus always on what you want. It's really hard when the body starts kind of screaming at us and these things start to come up and we start to get into the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. But you gotta stay present and you gotta stay focused on what you want because that's what you're going to create. Good. Take your hands down to frame your left foot, heel toe it to the midline, half or full splits. So you're taking half splits, hips back, toes to the face, and if you're taking full splits, tuck the right toes under and start to kick the left leg forward. Another little, little trick is, I call it like the caterpillar move. 
If you bend your knees a little bit in the pose, it takes you out of the hamstrings and a little more to the hips. And then straighten the legs a tiny little bit from there, you go back into the hamstrings. And then again, when the hamstrings had enough, bend the knees a little bit, get into the groins. And then when the, the hips have had enough, go ahead and extend the legs a little bit more. So you're kind of inching your way down to the ground like a caterpillar. All in one action, press the palms down, tuck the right toes under, sweep the left leg back and up, one legged dog. And this time, cross your left leg behind your right so your foot's off the other side. Shift the weight forward to plank. Lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward face. Exhale, downward face. And as you do, really press the right hip crease back to the back wall. Down, down. Walk your hands all the way back to meet your feet at the back of the mat. Pada Hastasana. Lift up the front of your feet, slide your hands underneath, stepping on the entire palm. Inhale, lift out, lengthen, suck in your belly. With the sides of your waist, begin to pull and fold in. So it's your side bodies that are really helping to pull you in. Your arms are pulling, but they're pulling you down. So be very mindful. If your back starts to round, it's generally an indication you're using too much shoulder. We want to use less shoulder, less arm. We really want to pull the back muscles up. We want to find the sides of the waist. If the legs are straight, we're going to start to pull the knees and thighs back to lift the hips up. So your whole core is what's supposed to do the work. Your core starts from your knees and goes all the way up to your neck, front to back. It's not just a set of abdominal muscles. So see if you can connect with your core here. Release the hands and slowly roll it up. One vertebra at a time. Roll the shoulders back and down, stand tall. Place your left hand on your hip, find a peace sign, two finger grip on your right big toe. Find your balance first, then work on the extension of the right leg. So you don't have to start from the ground. We're in our classes here, it's more challenging. We like to do the ground up thing. So if you wanna try that, you can. And then take the leg to the right and the arm to the left. It doesn't have to be today, but eventually the eye gaze goes to the left. And something that was really spectacular in that moment there is that one person went for the going to the ground and coming up and everybody else went to go do the same thing. It just shows how we tend to inspire each other, whether we're on our mats or off them. Be an instrument of light. Bring it back to center, bring the leg center and then find your tree pose. So you could place your right foot either on top of the hip and a half lotus or on the inner thigh, and one hand or both hands come to heart. This is a great place to stay. Some yogis like to move into a toe stand from here and particular arm balance. Maybe just a challenge is to try to reach the arms up and grow and lengthen or even close the eyes. Again, if things get wobbly, challenging, you fall out of it, Again, we just get back in. And release. Same thing on the other side. So either start at standing, find the weight in your right leg, bend up your left knee, hook your big toe, and work on the extension, or start from the ground and pull all the way up. Good. And take the leg to the left, arm to the right, Eventually, eye gaze to the right. Rewind, bring it back to center, and find tree. Either with the foot on the top of the hip and a half lotus, or on the inner thigh. One hand or both hands at heart. So if you are in the tree, and you barely get your foot up on top of the hip, you can always hold on with just your right hand. Just Pose they can bring both hands to the heart. And then release. I'll go ahead and play on the other side. Don't let me cheat you out of your practice. Go for it. <laughs> nice. And release. Forward fold. 
walk it out, down dog. So this is our middle of the day, quick 45 minute energizing flow. Great to do on your lunch break, get back to it. We're gonna end in a one-legged pigeon because this is one of the best ways to end your practice, bring you back to that calm, peaceful state. Take your right leg back and up, one-legged dog. And then take your right knee behind your right wrist and your right foot behind your left wrist for one-legged pigeon. Square your hips off and then start to walk it out. So you might find yourself on blocks again, you might find yourself down to the elbows and forearms. The goal is to get the forehead down to the earth. Finding our breath. And the surrendering in the hips. Everyone has wonderful alignment in their pigeons here. Something I want you guys to notice at home because what we see all the time with the beginner students is that you wanna make sure the knee is out to the side. Sometimes the knee will be more to the midline or over. Will you show them how, what, what doing it wrong looks like? Good, so this is what we don't wanna do. You wanna make sure that you take your knee and pull it outside of the body, yeah. That way you can roll over the front of the left hip. So if you're stuck over here and your hips up off the air, that's an indication too that you're not quite appropriate in your front leg. You wanna be up and over the left hip. Even if your butt's real high, because the hips are real tight, you're better off with that leg alignment with the hips high than getting all the way down and rolling over to one side. You wanna be square. Press it back, downward facing dog. Good, nice and sweet. Take the left leg back and up. Just wanna give ourselves the yin to the yang. Take the left leg through, one-legged pigeon. If we were to just come in here and do a vinyasa without slowing down, we wouldn't really be serving the yoga um, any justice. You wanna make sure that not only we focus on energizing and, and bringing strength into our practice, but that we also focus on the softness, the sweetness. Uh, the letting go in the practice. Our one-legged pigeon is a great time to notice ourselves in the present moment. Pratyahara, withdrawing from the external senses, withdrawing from whatever else is going on in our crazy world and staying here. The, um, the mind of the human being is very much like we are getting ready to leave the house in the morning a little bit frantically and we're thinking about how what we have to do at work and then we're at work thinking about our grocery list and then we're at the grocery store thinking about being in yoga and then we're in yoga thinking about our laundry and the list goes on and on and on. But use your practice as a vehicle to help you get more present, whether it be within the poses here on your mat, but within the poses that, the real poses that begin actually when we step off of our mat. Good, so it's up to you. You can either come up and just swing your right leg around to meet the left in a seated position, or you can find downward facing dog and jump through to a seated position. And then reaching the arms overhead, roll it back one vertebra at a time. Final belly twist, take the right knee into the body, interlace on top of the knee. On the inhale, hold, and on the exhale, pull the knee a little bit over towards the right underarm. Belly twist, pull the knee across the body, look and reach to the right. You can also move into a reclining dancing Shiva here, grabbing the outer edge of your right foot and extending the leg. Make sure that your bottom leg stays down the middle of the mat. Mm -hmm. And you want to take that top hip and pull it down and away from the face. And then release. Left knee into the body. Interlace on top of the left knee. 
Inhale, holding. Exhale, pulling the knee towards the left underarm. And belly twist, pull the knee across the body to the right. Looking and reaching to the left, pulling the top hip down and away from the face. Making sure that the leg is lengthened down the middle of the mat. And if you want to take your reclining dancing Shiva, you can grab the outer edge of the foot and extend it. And this is a great flow for you to do on your hour lunch break. It's 45 minutes, gives you a little bit more time to eat. You can do it right from your desk on your laptop. Back to Shavasana. Give you the energy and the mental power that you need to get you through the rest of your day. Final Shavasana. Allow yourself to let go. Take as much time as you need to. Good in some peace and quiet, giving yourself that mental clarity for the rest of your day. Thank you so much, you beautiful yogis, for showing up. Namaste.